actually a middle grade level that talk. Uh, this is actually a middle grade. Hello everybody, it's your girl Jay, and today I am here with my April wrap up part 4 out of 4 for 2021. I read a total of 20 books this month, so I split it up into 4 parts. So if you're interested in the other 15 books that I read this month, then they will be linked down below and you can check them out. And without further ado, let us get started. The first book I'm going to be talking about is Middletown by Sarah Moon. I give this a 3 out of 5 stars. This book follows Eli and her older sister Anna, who have always depended on each other when their mother is arrested for drunk driving and forced to go to rehab. They begin to depend on each other even more. They decide that they do not want to enter the foster care system and so they will stop at nothing in order to prevent that from happening and staying together. This causes Anna to begin dressing up as Aunt Lisa who is their mother's older sister and a bunch of shenanigans unfold from there. This is actually a middle grade novel that talks about a lot of sense sensitive topics. It talks about gender identity, sexuality, alcoholism, neglect, a lot of different subjects in a very sensitive way. I really liked the sister bond in this. You could really tell how much these two cared for each other and the extents that they would go to protect each other. I also really liked both of these main characters. Eli was really great. I think that a lot of teenagers will be able to see themselves in Eli and the struggle of trying to figure out who they are. The book was a very quick read, like it is very short, the writing flowed very nicely, so I did finish it in one sitting. I did enjoy it for the most part. I did end up giving it 3 out of 5 stars only because I think that it was very surface level on the topics that it discussed, but I do think that it could have been deep dove into a little bit more. It's probably because it is a middle grade novel, so like you don't want to, you know, throw all this stuff at a young teenager, but I do still think that there was a lot of potential that could have been looked at more with this, but yeah, it was enjoyable. 3 out of 5 stars, like I said, I think a lot of people will be able to see themselves represented in it, so I definitely think that it is an important book and you guys should check it out when it comes out in April 2021, so it should be out by now. The next book I'm not going to talk too much about because I actually have a full reading vlog up for it, so if you want to hear my full thoughts on it, check that out, but it is Shadow and Bone by Lee Bardugo. This is the first time I read this book, so it was a lot of fun. I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. Like I said, if you want to hear my full thoughts then check out that vlog but I enjoyed it. Next up is Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. I gave this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. This follows Elizabeth Scrivener who grew up in a magical library full of magical grimoires. She wishes to become a warden which is basically a protector of the library and the grimoires inside. One night there is an attack on the library and one of the grimoires escapes. Elizabeth takes it upon herself to protect protect a library, but then a tragedy strikes and she is left the sole suspect in the crime. So she joins Nathaniel Thorne, who is a powerful sorceress, and his demon servant Silas in order to try to clear her name, prove her innocence, and prove who actually committed the crime that night, and it's like the story of that. Elizabeth is probably one of my favorite characters of all time. She is like a badass, sword-wielding, tall girl, so she's my kind of girl. Nathaniel was wonderful. He was very moody, brooding, sassy, sarcastic. I loved his character. He was also dealing with a lot of emotional pain, so that was interesting to dive into. I just think that the banter between these two was really well done, and a lot of the time I was laughing at what they were saying to each other. They just made my heart really happy. I also really liked how the romance was more of a slow burn. There was a lot of tension between the two. I did not exactly enjoy that Elizabeth is 16 and Nathaniel is 18, so it's kind of like, eh, I mean, it's fine, but Elizabeth is also like a child still, so, I don't know, 16 and 18 are a wide range to me just because when you're 16, you're still a little baby. When you're 18, like, you know a lot more than you did when you were 16, at least in my opinion you do, so that was a bit like, eh, but still really love them. They're very cute together, I'm not gonna lie. Silas, on the other hand, favorite character of all time. He is 
such a little cinnamon roll but also completely terrifying at the exact same time and I loved every second of it. I really loved his relationship with Nathaniel and how deep it actually was. I also really liked his relationship with Elizabeth and being able to see that grow and progress as the story went on. I also am a big fan that he was able to turn into a cat because hello adorable. I just really liked his character and his story arc in this. I loved it. I was also a big fan of the setting. Magical libraries sound right up my alley. I also really enjoyed how Elizabeth was able to talk to the grimoires and I thought it was really cool how they each had like unique personalities if you will. Like some were very nice but then others would like rip your face off and I was just here for it. Overall I think that this was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it while I was reading it and it's probably a new favorite in my opinion. So yeah, 4.5 out of 5 stars. Definitely recommend if you haven't checked it out already. It's been out for a while, so you probably have. It was pretty popular when it first came out, so I'm assuming you probably have read it, but if you haven't yet, please do because it's a lot of fun. The next book I have is Grown by Tiffany D. Jackson. I gave this a 5 out of 5 stars. So this follows 17 year old Enchanted Jones who wants nothing more than to be a singer. One day at an audition she is noticed by 28 year old Corey Fields. He is an R&B legend and he promises her the world. She is over the moon ecstatic about this. She is so excited to get started. She falls very deeply for Corey until she meets the not so nice Cory, and it's like the story of that. Right from the very first chapter of this book, the prologue is literally like two pages long, and I was hooked on this story. It is so addictive, like you fly right through it. The story is loosely based on the allegations against R. Kelly, as well as things that happened to the author when she was a young woman, so it was very surreal to read. The book is very heavy. It deals with a lot of dark topics like pedophilia, grooming, uh, sexual abuse, emotional abuse, physical abuse, like it's a lot to take in. So you definitely need to be in the correct mindset when you pick the book up because like I said it is dark. You as a reader obviously know what Corey is doing is wrong, you just want to like reach through the pages to protect Enchanted. It's also like mind-boggling how many people in the industry knew what Corey was doing but turned a blind eye to it just because he's rich and famous, which happens so often in the world, which is just sad to think about. Like this not only happens to children and women, but young boys as well, which you need to remember while reading this. Like it's not a woman's issue, it's like an everybody issue. I actually listened to this on audiobook and I think that the narrator did an incredible job with Enchanted's voice. I flew through the book because you become so addicted to this story and figuring out what's going to happen next and if Enchanted is going to be alright. Overall, definitely recommend every Everybody pick this book up. It is heartbreaking, but worth it. And then the final book that I read was The Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang. I gave this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. It follows Stella Lane, who is extremely successful in all aspects of her life, except for her love life. Stella believes that this block is because of her autism. Her mother is also pressuring her to have babies and get married and settle down. So she ends up hiring an escort named Michael to try to teach her the ways of a relationship, especially the sexual aspect. I am so in love with these characters. They are just so sweet and adorable. I've personally worked with a lot of children and people with autism and I really liked how the autism spectrum was represented in this book. I absolutely loved how Stella was 100% authentically herself. She didn't want to change for anybody. She just wanted to learn more skills and I think that that's really important because people who are autistic should not have to change to make you feel better. They are who they are and that's totally cool. My favorite part of this book was 100% the underlying message of consent and how important that is. Michael was always so in tune with Stella and her wants and needs which I think is so important. Overall, I really love this book. Book. It's definitely one of my new favorites. I love these characters and I definitely, again, recommend you guys pick this up. If you haven't already, it has been out for a while and it was, again, very popular when it first came out, so I'm sure you have. But if you haven't, take this as your sign to pick it up and read it now because, oh, 
they're just wonderful. All right, everybody. So that was my last April wrap up for 2021. The other three links will be down below if you want to check out the other 15 books. Also, let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them. And I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye. Yeah.